so the next speaker I want to introduce um, is a gentleman I met yesterday. His name's James Steele. And the title of his speech is, There's No Such Thing as Cardio. Um, I met James yesterday. We shared a cocktail together. Awesome dude. Um, really down to earth. And I've been really looking forward to his talk. So I'm, uh, I'm excited. I, I hate cardio. So we'll see. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that there's no such thing. Um, he's a returning speaker to the Tony One Convention. Um, he's also an exercise scientist from Southampton Solent University. Um, he's getting his PhD, and he's an associate lecturer specializing in exercise phys physiology and biomechanics. Um, he's also a published author with another excellent speaker here at the 21 convention. You guys may have heard his talk online, uh, Doug McGuff. So he's a published speaker uh, with Doug and some of his other colleagues. Um, in various peer-reviewed journals. So I'm really excited to uh, hear what James has to say. Welcome him up. Thanks, Robert. I'm going to set my stopwatch so I can try to stick to time. So there we go. Let's set the water. OK, guys. What I'm going to talk to you about today is a an unconventional topic. Maybe not for some of you who have seen Doug's talk and uh, are familiar with some of the kind of thoughts in the area, um, but certainly for me, uh, in my sphere, the academic world, this is a very unconventional topic. Uh, and it's really exciting for me to come to talks like this, where I'm used to talking at you know, academic conferences, lecturing to PhDs and MDs and whatnot, um, and lots of scientists sitting in a room going, oh yes, that's very interesting, that's very interesting. Um, but it's good for me to come to these talks because I actually get to speak to the people who are going to take these ideas and apply them and actually use them in practice rather than just thinking about the theory and thinking, yes, it's, it's very interesting. Um, so what I want to do to start off with is just give you a bit of background as to how the idea developed uh, a bit of what I've done over the years that um, has brought me into the production of a, uh, this unconventional paper um, that I'll talk you through for the remainder of the talk. So I started off, um, how many years ago now, five years ago doing an undergraduate degree in sport and exercise science um, at Southampton Solent University where I am now. And about around that time, I started to get introduced to um, the concepts of uh, high intensity resistance training. Up until that point, I was a typical gym rat in the gym, sort of five, six days a week, three hour sessions at the time, you know. I uh, was in there for so long that I couldn't train hard, I was just training with a really high volume and I wasn't really uh, thinking about it in a logical or a scientific manner. I was kind of going with what the muscle magazines told me to do, you know. I was doing lifting loads of weights, loads of sets, loads of reps, um, doing my cardio, which we're going to talk through today. Um, and it wasn't until I actually came to the university that I started to think about these ideas. What? A little bit louder. All oh, right. Um, it wasn't until I started to come to university um, to study this uh, sports science and exercise science degree that I started to think about things in this way. Um, and around that time, I got introduced to uh, Arthur Jones's works and um, his ideas that uh, resistance training was just as effective for improving your cardiovascular fitness as um, traditional cardio exercises are. And so for, you know, the last five years, I've been chewing the fat on that idea. And his idea kind of made sense to me, you know, uh, intuitively, but I hadn't really seen any of the kind of hard evidence, the peer-reviewed uh, research um, to support the idea. It just kind of, it kind of made sense. Um, so throughout my degree, I, um, you know, I kept that idea in mind and had the opportunity to work with various different athletes and try to apply the idea and at the same time start to look at some of the research that had been done um, that actually either did or did not support the idea to see whether or not you know, I was actually applying an evidence-based practice to these athletes. Um, so during my second and third years of my degree, I got the chance to work with um, an Ironman triathlete, uh, an international athlete. If for those of you who don't know what the Ironman is, it's an it's a ultra-endurance event. It's kind of one of those pinnacle events for endurance athletes. Um, and I got to work with him and start to apply these principles. And uh, it was a foreign concept to him, you know, minimal high-intensity resistance training, training once or twice a week, single sets taken to momentary muscular failure, really intense stuff, but really low volume, really low frequency. Um, 
And while I was doing that, I had to write up reports and whatnot to um, hand into my lecturers uh, to evidence what I was doing and uh, you know, show that I had an understanding of the research and that what I was doing was actually supported. Um, so I started looking for the research in the area and getting you know, little bits here and there, starting to piece them together, looking at different measurements that we take of cardiovascular fitness, things like VO2 max, and which is the maximum amount of oxygen your body can uptake and utilize during exercise, uh, things like economy of movement, which is uh, you know, how efficiently you actually perform exercise at an absolute workload, and things like lactate threshold, which is uh, how well your body deals with uh, the production of lactate and its removal. And I started looking at studies and finding that um, you know, some of them showed that these things improved with resistance training, and some of them didn't. Uh, and it was really hard to kind of like gather you know, what the consensus was. There were various reviews uh, done by you know, prominent exercise physiologists in the area, um, which kind of you know, made the suggestion that you know, strength training, resistance training, it's good for cardiovascular fitness or measurements of cardiovascular fitness, um, and it's useful for some athletes but it's never going to be as good as traditional cardio training. And so I kind of went through and finished my degree with that in mind, thinking, you know, that maybe the evidence is just lacking, you know, there's contradictory bits here and there, and it's hard to kind of tease out what the real conclusion is. So I kind of went along with that. Um, it wasn't until last year, or the year before actually, um, that my colleague, who was going to be here today, but unfortunately he's not uh, around, um, James Fisher, came to me and uh, suggested that we start to put together a uh, academic paper on resistance training recommendations. So um, for any of you, uh, are any of you heard of the American College of Sports Medicine? It's one of the kind of big sports medicine and exercise medicine, uh, exercise science organizations. And they publish a position stand on resistance training, which is supposed to be a uh, unbiased review of all the evidence in the area um, and give recommendations to athletes and uh, the general public to apply. Um, unfortunately that position stand over the years, is, it's come through various different uh, reviews and editions so to speak and it's received a lot of heavy criticism um, for falsifying information, uh, misciting evidence, citing evidence that doesn't support their beliefs etc etc and um, we had a look over all the evidence and um, tended to agree with the criticisms. So we said to ourselves, well, why don't we write a paper that acts as a position stand? Because at that point, all the criticisms didn't really nail everything down and give people a set of recommendations to actually take and apply. So we thought, why don't we write our own kind of position stand on it? So last year, we published this uh, paper, Evidence-Based Resistance Training Recommendations, which um, you can get a hold of on my blog, or um, which I'm sure Anthony will put the link on the uh, web on the 21 Convention when the video is posted up. And um, for those of you here, it's uh, jamessteelii.blogspot.com. Um, and I just write about all sorts of stuff on there when I've got the time to. It's not just uh, exercise. Um, and while we were writing this paper, I, uh, or when we started to plan out the paper, I suggested, you know, why, why don't we, if we're, you know, going to spend all this time reviewing all the research and looking at what, uh, you know, the actual research findings suggest, uh, 